Steam was kind of barren this week as far as new releases go. Hunter Primal left a bad enough taste in my mouth. I'm not touching Ark unless people really want to see it, and everything else is either early release or a $3 time killer in between ranked games of your choosing. So, a friend of mine drops in and says, F*** it, why not talk about Strider? F*** it, let's talk about Strider! So we all know Strider is good. Game's been out so long, this may as well be a retro review. If I had to sum up what makes Strider work so well in one word, it'd be momentum. Just load the game up, hit new game, choose your difficulty, and there you go. No overlong cutscene, no frustrating text menus to scroll through, you're just in the game playing it. The opening cutscene in Strider takes seconds and it's just him gliding into base. Your objective is established almost immediately, which is to assassinate the Grandmaster Mayo. You're told everything you need to know right away. The game doesn't pull any surprise twists at the end, the only thing that gets added are a few enemies that are all one-dimensional characters because story isn't the goal in this game. Actual gameplay is. How about that? The game doesn't want you to slow yourself down. There is no ability you get in this game that causes your character to pause in place for an extended amount of time. You'll notice this as you're running along mashing your attack button and even if you don't kill an enemy, your forward motion is still unimpeded. Even getting hit by an enemy won't put you into any sort of delayed stun until you get the more difficult enemies that can knock you on your ass. Even your option spells won't slow you down at all as you can summon your bird and panther while running with no impact to your forward motion. Jumping, sliding, climbing, attacking, there is nothing in Strider that is slowly paced save for that stupid purple sword. The plot keeps itself to a bare minimum which is great for the type of game this is. I already praised the opening cutscene for taking a very short amount of time to get the ball rolling, but in that opening level what have we learned? Let's say you've never heard of the Strider series before and you've never played a Verse series game. From this opening, we see Strider gliding in from the sky amidst heavy enemy fire. Kind of like commando style parachuting like we've seen in a lot of movies, right? Couple that with the sword, face guard, scarf, and the way of running, all the elements are there of a stereotypical ninja. That and your objective for being in the city is to assassinate someone. But why are you assassinating this person? Listening to the dialogue of Russian stock villain 82, you know this area is under a ruthless dictatorship. After all, it sounds like most crimes are punished by death. In the first 15 minutes of running around and jacking up enemy units, we've learned everything we need to know about the plot and been having fun being all ninja and shit. Don't get the wrong idea, this game isn't flawless. For as much as the game wants us to keep moving unimpeded, the folks at Capcom shoved in a few cutscenes to completely stop gameplay at a few points. Now, these scenes aren't very long, but they are wordy if that makes any sense. Like, instead of just saying, hey, go here and find this, it wants to have a crazy person ramble on and frustrate both Strider and the audience. The purple sword, as mentioned before, is terrible to play with because it turns your fast, mash-away attack into a slow, awful mess that you're forced to use at various points of the game to open a door or kill a certain baddie with. Kunai projectiles are almost completely useless except to open certain doors and get goodies with. So is your uppercut slashing move. You can go through an entire run of the game without using that move. Pretty much if it doesn't revolve around your basic attack button, chances are you won't use it very much. It's also listed as a Metroidvania, but I'd hesitate to label it so. It has the map of a Metroidvania to be sure, but the emphasis isn't on exploration. In the mini-map on the right hand corner you have an arrow very blatantly telling you where you're supposed to go. There is no need to explore or discover your own way in this game as that isn't the purpose. Secrets are clearly indicated on your map, which takes away the point of them being, well, secret. But all that I've mentioned are very small nitpicks in an otherwise superb, damn near perfect for what it is game. I don't think I could recommend this game more. If for some reason you passed up this game, I'd say give it a go. It's fairly inexpensive and a great game to enjoy a weekend with. If nothing else, this game should give you hope someone might still be working at Capcom who was able to competently fix Devil May Cry 4 in the special edition coming out.